Earlier today, being Thursday, the 29th day of September 2022, or the Nigerian Nairo had further depreciated in value, exchanging the United States dollar at an equivalent of 727 Naira, as well as 737 Naira, being buying and selling prices respectively. You can imagine, where is this economy of the zoo heading to? We are patiently waiting. We are patiently, patiently waiting to the point where it will hit 1,000 Naira per dollar. Then you'll be rest assured that the economic burial ceremony of the Zoological Republic is finally confirmed. Wonderful people, men and women of good conscience and lovers of freedom all over the globe, we welcome you back once again to our News Digest. Of course, this is coming from the desk of Nick Bobby, where we bring you the reality, the very, very reality of life, how everything is hurting in Biafra, in the Zoological Republic. And of course, we have uh, some important uh, discussions we want to have with you today. And uh, before we go into it, we just want to urge you to hit the subscribe button, as well as to share to our videos to those who like it. Do give us thumbs up, I mean likes, if you do like what we are doing here. As well as, as we just like discussing about the level of economy in Nigeria, the way it's falling. And as this is going on, uh, the DSS has gone ahead. Of course, those who run the DSS is the federal government of the zoo. They have acquired a 3 billion naira water for sub-bugging technology. And this is in all their attempt by the federal government of the zoo to see how they will put an end uh, to the agitation for the beer farm restoration. The question is, would they stop IPOB? Will they be able to stop IPOB? Never. IPOB is destructively and the strategically stubborn. They will not. Uh, if you see what IPOB has been able to go through before now, you will know that the Zoological Republic is not their match. Uh, whatever they try to do, IPOB continue pushing ahead. You know the, the secret is the determination from the back of your mind. Mazin and the canon used to say that the army of volunteer has never been defeated. And it is not in this era and never. Every IPOB, every genuine IPOB you are seeing, uh, from the lowest to the top, they are all working with their mind. These are volunteer people doing their best with all their resources. Well, of course, and that brings us to this um, discussion. I remember I did promise you earlier that we are going to have an extensive discussion today, uh, which I said that most of you might be wondering, what type of discussion? Are we going to have since I am not bringing, um, should I say, a live program here? But of course, to me personally, I regard it as um, uh, as a discussion, as an interaction, because this is another way we can reach out to our followers to give them thanks to call out to them for how they've been participating, performing. Uh, these are great crops of followers. These are great crop of people that we do learn from is awesome. And what brought me to this is um, as I'm discussing about all uh, this technology, um, the DSS, which is practically the zoo government acquired uh, to bulk WhatsApp, uh, specifically meant for beer friends. Uh, yesterday, we brought you uh, a video that's captioned, it was in Lagos, decided to move their business back home. Of course, um, the, the caption continued, uh, where it says Nigerian government loses suits. Yeah, that's that. But I just want to concentrate on this particular first caption. It was in Lagos, decided to move their business back home. It brought about a lot of reaction and a lot of comments. People really live, love this, that it was, have decided to do. Then, uh, um, this decision is truly what's doing to welcome it to our, our own region. I recall that it has not been today. It has been that sometimes, like we said earlier, during the time of our eternal leader, Dean Chukwemi he continued telling our people to return. To return. That's the best thing to do. And Mazin Namdekana has been saying it as well. And prior to this time, they have gone to Enugas at a point. They got a place they said they want to develop. But I don't know what happened at a point. They left it. So based on this caption is what I really want to discuss further and we're going to read out the comments of our people 
those who commented endlessly, constructively, intelligently, we learn from them. And I want you people to really key in. This is what is going on here. I'm going to mention your names one after the other. Anyone that has commented here, I think I have about 32 comments that has live here. I don't know if there are other comments. So I am going to mention those names. And uh, these are quite, quite, quite interesting comments that I'm seeing here. But I'm starting from the first name I'm seeing here. Wonder. I don't know if it's a man or a woman. But I say glory to God Almighty. It was a not are not realizing themselves. Well, maybe I think he want, she wants to say, or he wants to say, it was a not realizing themselves. The best news ever. Well, thank you, Wanda. <laughs> thank you. That's that. You know, I'm interested with you guys right now. Ada Uzigwe, she said, very good news. I hope they are serious now. Well, I hope so. I hope so. There might be some other challenges that we follow. Also, Abonye says, good news. Is there, maybe they are serious. That's what she's saying. Oshimonye Buchi, God bless Ibuaz. He say, he say, Biafra must be free. Of course, he say, I join you, Oshim. Shaku Tupac, yeah. Shaku Tupac, she, she wrote and said, Oshirenti Ibu in Lagos. <laughs> in the name of doing business. If they like, they should implement it. If they like, they should not. And we we'll continue to face and accept what they see from the Fulani government controlled zoological republic of Nigeria. Thank you, Nikki Bobby. Wow, wow. Tupac, we drop our cup for you. We thank you. All of you that commented, we thank you all of you. And Botwai, <laughs> he this says his name is Botwai. He commented and said, even those people are not part of Nigeria. A good news ever. Well, I think what he's saying is that those in the northern part of the Zoological Republic should start migrating back to Biafra land. Thank you, but why? Francis Sibe says, good to hear. Chukwu Kikabia, Mr. Twok, my brother, good to hear. If, in as much as they have made this particular decision, and I believe they will come back. And then, um, ah, I won't be able to understand this, say, Tabubu, for the Igbos, well, I didn't understand that, but he went on to write, the wise men from the East, thank God for finally waking up. Convert your home to another Dubai. Exactly, my brother. He kept going, of course, a beautiful land is more than Dubai. He continued and writes, let them come to your home to buy all valuables and made in your land. Thanks be to God. Great. We thank, we thank you for that. And um, uh, somebody wrote Adekunle Yusuf. Yeah, um, Adekunle, we appreciate your writer, but he has already written first. Yeah, he called it was name, a lot of names. I don't know if he was annoyed before the, at the first point he wrote, but he later wrote again after commenting the first one. He now wrote and said, that should be the way forward. They should move their glorified trading to Abba and develop Southeast. All those it was living in the slum of Ajegunle, Apapa, Festak, and the rest should also relocate to their homeland. Time to develop all regions in Nigeria, not just Lagos and the Southwest. Well, Adakunle Yusuf, we appreciate you, no matter the condition of your heart. I know sometimes one can know that's my human mind. But thank you, Adakunle, we appreciate you. Apu Mwolisa, she wrote and said, me too, I hope they are serious. Apple, we really hope that they will work it out. Well, they said that it's a, a journey of a thousand miles starts with a step. And then um, Samuel, the former, said, I hope you are serious. I like that. Well, all of us hope that. Samuel, thank you. Remy, a case. Uh, this says they ate even late because the handwriting has been on the wall ever since. Well, better late than to be sorry. Okay, thank you, Remy. We appreciate. Yeah, that's a very nice good. I better Rose says good news. Yes, it's a good news. Roger Bobina says good development, of course. Emmanuel Akota says, wow, that's great. Glory Igwe says, so Shetima can have Lagos. Well, of course, I'm glory. <laughs> now I really grab this your comment. You know, I've read this comment before, but I couldn't really get where you are going to. But now I've come to really understand where you are heading to. Glory, thank you. Thank you for that comment. Because um, Shetima, of course, um, is the running mate of um, Tinibu, right? Yeah, Tinibu says that his name is um, City Boy. Then the Shetima says his own name is Golden Boy. Of course, they say City Boy and Golden Boy want to rock Nigeria. Of course, yeah. 
Of course, Shetima will have Lagos for himself. Yeah. Um, Reverend Evangelist um, Ngozi Okafor says, Good news, but the only thing I can say is Zuko Nigeria is dead. Biafra is moving forward, ongoing. Oh, maybe forward on, going back. No, maybe never going back. Thank you. Thank you, Evangelist Ngozi. Thank you. We appreciate Biafra continue marching forward. And Lucy wrote and said, Hey, thank God, Bikono Nano. I got your tune. A bobula. Ibono, Akachukuno, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the, this Ibo language of um, Lucy was difficult to read because um, she didn't put any comma, no full stop. Well, of course, we'll be able to crack it and read it. Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> we appreciate. God is great. Uh, God is good. Amen. Oh, that's good. God is good. Said Nikki Bobby, I used to listen to your news every morning, but since you started. Using Nonye Buchi Oba against Simon, I stopped. But now I just subscribe for you. Let me see how your news goes. <laughs> nice one, of course. He, he said nice one at the end of the day. Well, God is good. I mean, well, thank you for writing first. That is what I have to commend you. But of course, I am not using anybody. I don't know who is called Nonye Buchi Oba. I don't use anybody. Uh, Nicky Bob, Bobby vibrate by themselves. As you are hearing our voice resonating, that is us talking alone. We do not use anybody. We come to you and tell you what we want. And of course, we must continue entertaining our people. And under good, under God is good. And there is a comment there. Somebody wrote and said, Chinedu Kanebi, Chinedu Kanebi said, I will subscribe to his channel as soon as he starts showing Mazi Simon some respect. <laughs> Whoa, Chinedu Kanebi. I don't disrespect anybody. Yes, Nikki Bobby never. We respect every individual. But that doesn't make that when one is straying, we will follow the person to stray. No, we never do that. We do not go astray. What we do is to call people to order and alert people who might be following the person so that you'll understand you are left from right. Uh, we will not be here somebody pushing to the hole. No, that is that. Uh, we do not disrespect anybody at any point. Of course, we continue doing our work. What we are doing is a work. And whatever we tell you, tell you here is a gospel. That is the truth. We go through to, uh, well, of course, the former Nikki Bobby is not here. But just check from A to Z, all our brokers, what we told you from the beginning is here we stand. We don't mean swear. That is hard to know those who stand for their words. Of course, Chinedu uh, Kanebi, this is my point, And this is where I stand. I have, I don't disrespect anybody and I will not give respect to whom respect is not deserved. Of course, that is Nikki Boy for you. Betty Ikem also says, which Biafra land we are, oh, we are the kidnapping and bandits. There are fractions. Which one will people follow? Oh, uh, sorry. There are fractions. Which one will people follow? Okay. Please put your house in order. Okay, yeah. Betty Ike was, yeah, you made a great point here. I support you. Uh, we need to put our house in order. Yes, we need it. It's, it's necessary. Thank you, Betty. And this is Tamaku. Good morning, Igbo. Now you people, eyes open. Since when Ojuku has told you. Oh, that's that. Like I've said it before. Thank you, Tama. Well, um, no time is too late. If they have come to realize it, well, we're going to start from somewhere. Chijo Kekema Kolam says he picked this. Ooh, <laughs> foolish it was because he is not intelligent enough or he picked them to validate his eligibility as a foreigner that is in the open domain to rule Nigeria like Buhari. I, I guess I know who Chijo Kekema Kolam is heading to. Uh, maybe when we capture the piece of news about um, um, Atiku Abubakar who said that he has. Uh, uh, in three occasions, selected three Igbo runners to be his vice president. That is why he loves Igbo. Well, Nkema Kalam, you are right. You are, I believe you are right. I know what you are saying. Thank you for that. And this is Ifi K. Mude. Uh, she wrote, or he wrote and said, You don't sound like Igbo. You sound like Arab. Arab. Are you serious? Are you being serious? Who doesn't sound like Igbo? We ourselves that made Igbo language in according to our own likes. Yes, Nicky Bobby, we do produce Igbo language the way we want. <laughs> I'm telling you serious. I'm serious. Well, 
Yes, we are real, if you hear about Igbos, we are the real Igbos. And that is not the way we sound. We speak with Igbo accents because Igbo language is the best language I've come to know. Forget about English. We love, cherish Igbo language the more. That's that. So I don't sound like any other tribe. I don't sound like any other people. We sound like Igbos. Um, if we would, well, that's that. But thank you for your comments as well. Endurance happened. She wrote and said, how are you sure this your news is true? <laughs> Endurance up and just keep up with Nikki Bobby. Uh, in the next one year, come back to Nikki Bobby and point out a particular video or news that we give you and say, look at what you say one year ago and now you are saying a different thing. Or oh, what this news you gave one year ago is not true. Uh, that is how you will know. I tell you that whatever that we bring to you on this platform is a gospel. Just tag along and you see what happens. Peter Sass wrote and said, Ibo, stop Mumu for me, dear. <laughs> well, of course, these are various um, ways, things we can hear. Yeah, and these are some of the ways that uh, made some of the comments that you people made, which I said we are going to have an interactive session. As I'm reading this um, comment, I think I'm calling your names. I'm interacting with your words. The best way to reach a man's heart is by what he writes or something like that. And like I said before, Adekunle Yusuf wrote before. But I'm, I'm not going to read what he wrote. But I'm going to... I will kind of read what Nambiono had replied him. And Nambi says, Are you aware Ibos don't have a working international airport and seaport? So how you expect a development? In South East. Well, uh, this is a very intelligent answer that Nnamdiyo Noha gave back to Adekunle Yusuf. Because Adekunle was trying to say that when he was claimed that they are uh, developing other regions, that he don't believe so. But let me just put the word here. All in all, I thank you guys so much. I thank you guys so much. This is that. I am going to deliberate on two major comments. And these two major comments... One, let me start um, from the one that um, Chinedu Kanebi wrote uh, when he said that we should show um, Simon Epa some respect. <laughs> well, <clears throat> let me go back there. I'm just going to use two minutes to discuss about it. You see what happened, my brother Kanebi. Um, I will look at a situation whereby Mazen Namdekan, when he was with us, he used to say that every Biafrance, so if at a point you don't know when somebody is using your head, well, that's left for you. But personally, I believe I brought gospel to our, sir, our people. Those who were against us at the beginning later came to realize what we are saying. They even came to apologize to us. What we always tell you is that use your tongue and count your teeth. On your group, you said... Uh, one of your one of your policies in your group as your top pilot as they said everybody say what you want that there is no law there is no policy that is what you people agreed that whatever you want to say say whatever you want to do do and that is uh, your ideology of bringing Biafra right you said for you to bring Biafra that everybody wants to do the way he wants a least fair uh, situation management do whatever you want. Nobody cares. But I ask you, how can you use such structure? How can you use such um, organization to bring about Biafran restoration? That alone shows you that you guys are playing. You are not serious with what you are doing. In a situation of autopilot, you say, whatever you want to do, do. But now as time progresses, people start asking questions. You guys start removing people from your group because they are asking intelligent questions. Because they have come to learn what we believe and what we have been trying to inculcate in so many of you. So some of you now started acting as leaders, right? Why you say from the beginning you have no leaders, is, that is why you call it autopilot. I think that is the first thing that will tell you that you guys doesn't know what you are doing. When you are struggling for freedom, there is no organization that shouldn't have a leader. Let's just start from the smallest organization that is called family. In a family setting, you have the mother, you have the father. The father is the head of the family. The mother is the, is the second. Then you have children, the elders and the youngest one. 
in that family setting, father and the mother have placed the rule, the policy, they put coffee, you will not go to um, co coffee, you will not go out of the house by so and so time, you will not return to house by so and so time, you will do this, this will be your duty, you, uh, you will always clean this house so and so day, you, you will always sweep this house so and so day. These are rules that they are made to groom you up for you to become a better adult, a reasonable adult tomorrow when you grow. I mean, this is the minus, the tiniest part of an organization, the family. Then when you start leading people of different background, different culture, and you are telling me you do not intend to have rule, do whatever you want, and you are at the same time telling me with this strategy that you'll be able to bring Biafra. Is it what you are preaching to people? Can I be? Is it what you are preaching to people? And you want me to believe that you guys are ready, that you guys are real. Just use this simple illustration I gave to you to know why the other pilots are not ready. They don't know what they're, what they're doing. If they know, they from the beginning says, do whatever you want. This is their slogan. Nobody cares. And you tell me that you'll be able to bring Biafra. And now people, because by nature, humans desire to know, right? Human being wants to know. That is the nature of human being. By nature, humans desire to know. That's why they ask questions. The ability for humans to reason, that's what separates them from other animals. Now, humans beginning to have started asking questions. Now, you guys started removing them from your group. You no, know, blocking them from your WhatsApp, from your Telegram group, from your Facebook group. And now, you guys are having issue. Have you, can't you not see that whatever goes around, must shall be comes around. That is where I post it. Go and digest what I just said. Uh, this is a special answer to Kanebi, as well as those who may, who may share the same opinion with him or her. I don't know if it's a man or so. But in all, I go back to the comments I was reading. I have a comment that stood out. This comment here is a very, is a valuable, should I say, invaluable piece that you have to take home. And I pin this comment. I think I owe this man something. I owe him something because as I was reading his comments, I was blown away, honestly. His name is The Spectacular. Look at the comment he wrote. He said, Igbo, the most unserious people. Is it today that they began saying they will do it? Now, they have acquired so much property that selling them off won't be easy anymore. Who will they sell it to? In the offer Manabi? He continued, he said, again, talking about relocating to Igbo land, how, respect, how receptive are the Igbos at home who are so hateful and envious of each other? Igbo love competition among themselves. People at home will see it as an opportunity to feed off these ones that want to return to Igbo land. They will inflate the price of land, shops, and houses. So why you are talking about moving back home? We need to go home and prepare for the return of our people back home. We need to make sure we make it easy for them to return without regretting that they left their estates outside the land. Man, I drop cap for you, the spectacular. Like I said, I owe you something and I will make sure that uh, I deliver. You know, uh, this is a very, very interesting point here that he, ra he raised. But I don't think this is uh, a young person. No, uh, you see the, the level of maturity, the reasoning, the reasonableness that follows these comments. If you regurgitate it, if you analyze it, you really understand that this is a very big point. And that's where I want us to deliberate. If you are really commenting on this particular video that I'm making, I say it's an interactive session, please comment on this point. Of course, I'm going to post this on this video here. You will see it. She, he raised, about, I don't know if it's a woman or a man, but he raised as a generalizer, yeah, we use he three important facts here. One, it has taken time. They have acquired a lot of um, properties in other part of uh, in other part of Nigeria, for example, in Lagos. How can they sell it? Well, 
definitely they will find a way to sell it. If it, even though it is not now, maybe in the future, they will find what they can use it for. And I did not talk about Igbos. They are not receptive when it comes to their people because they have this trait of competitiveness to compete with each other. Like I said in one of the previous videos, that within IPO, this is still existing. That spirit of competition, that um, a so-called media warrior for IPOB will wake up in the morning, go to Facebook and report his fellow media warrior. Those who are fighting the same thing and report it to Facebook, ask Facebook to close his account so that other people that are listening to Biafran struggle movement will come to his own platform. Uh, this is just a sample of what I'm getting here. So uh, let me now point out to the last point he made that we need to prepare our mind to welcome our brothers not to inflate prices of uh, the land, to make their returning easy for them. This is quite an interesting point here. Because this is what is always obtainable in our lands. People, a, an average Biafran Igbo man, want to turn every opportunity present before him. He wants to monetize every opportunity. Any means, that is why you see so many people monetizing Biafra agitation. I don't mean on the area of internet, of social media. They use it to trade in real life. That is why this is happening in our city Tokwa. So what do we do? Where do we go from here? Exactly. I want you guys, if you are commenting, comment based on this. It, it is accepted uh, because we need more ideology. But of course, I'm still going to give my own. You know, in Biafra land, we have land. Yes, we have vast area of land. Don't mind that they are saying that Biafra doesn't have land. We are just a dot. No, we have land. Take your time to move down, uh, maybe uh, from Edo State to Delta to Bayasa River State, Akwaibum Cross River, go to Ebony State, Abia State. You go to Imo State, Tanambara, Nugu, you will find out, um, you talk about part of Benue and the part of Kogi. These are very large areas. But what we are trying to say here is my own suggestion. Like the way that the people of Newe started, or should I say the people of Anambara entirely? Uh, that is one of the reasons, uh, sometimes people might not know, the reason why in Anambara today, is a place, the location, the region, you have the highest number of story buildings in Africa. Anambra is the country, or should I say Newe or Nichai. Anambra is the, is the state that has, has the highest number of story buildings in Africa, even not across the globe. Well, let me not, let me not talk across the globe, but let's concentrate in Africa. Some people might not understand the reason because the fact is that they made it in a way that if you are trying to build a house, you build your warehouse to be the ground floor. Then second, maybe the first floor, you can as well use it as a warehouse. Then the third floor is where you and your family will live. That is how they started. And that's why you see almost every family for today. For example, in the Newe, they have shops. In fact, in Newe as a whole, uh, one way or the other turned out to be a market zone. So, if our people in different areas, if you go to, if you happen to relocate to Enugu, for example, you want to establish your life, build an upstate. If you do not have money to build an upstate, just prepare a very solid foundation for upstate. If you're able to cover the first decade, you can start from there. Use part of it to live, make your residential house, use part of it then for your warehouse, for your shop. If you can't go far more than that, your children come up, they continue from where you start. Your children can start from the second decade or the first decade. And this is one of the things that will help us. And I recall one certain time that Mazen Namdekan was deliberating on this. He said, if they say that Biafra has no land, we will make it to accommodate us, even everyone from every other part of, um, not Biafra, every other part of African soil or black soil, those in the United States who are black can return to Biafra. Biafra will accommodate you. What was in the can said, even though if it will take us to be building 50-story building, that we will do it so that 
if you come to Biafra land, you will see story building, story building, so that we have enough land to accommodate our people. And equally have enough land for our farming, because Biafra cannot do without farming. In this Biafra, is what I have seen that in years to come, Biafra is going to feed the entire Africa, because we have it. We have this blessed soil, blessed weather, we have rain, we have river, we have everything that takes us to feed Africa. Even across the world, across Africa, we can as well. So with this, we will be able to really cover this issue of, um, of space, of accommodating our people. That is in terms of physical space. But another thing that uh, the spectacular raise, another accommodation is from the heart. Yes, have this heart to welcome your brother home. Because if you do not, after a year, two years, they will be regretting. Ah, it would have been better that they stay back in Lagos. So we are working so hard, trying to sensitize our people, trying to reason with them, so that they have a way to root out all this ideology of a very high level of competitiveness. It doesn't really make sense sometimes. We really, really, really want you to contribute on these comments that this spectacular road is quite interesting. These are very gigantic three points that he raised. And don't inflame the price of your, of your land. If you happen to have some places you sell because your people are your brothers and sisters are coming back you know, it will be a sort of exodus. We have so many of them in Lagos. We have so many of them in Abuja, in Kano, in other parts. So when they start coming in, it will be, be a kind of exodus. You have to open your mind to welcome your brothers and sisters. Honestly, honestly, that is why I, 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 I wow, this comment really drove me bonkers when I was really reading it. I said, whoa, this is a nice point, of course. And um, those who are in other places, if you equally come back, still know that you are coming back to meet your brothers. So still have an open mind to cohabit, to live together with your people. Not that maybe when you come, you want to show them the other way, the, another level. Of course, the most important thing is that we work hand in hand. There are some, there are vast land in Enugu. There are still land in Imo State. Imo State has land. There are land in Abia State. There are some places in Abia State that you will go. It's forest, 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 forest. So Biafra has land. Aside from the land we have, we have body of water that could be turned for business. Like I always say this example. In the Netherlands, they have a very small portion of land where the country is using. So their body of water, they turn it to be as another land. They sell portion of, land, of water. Just like if you come to Biafra land, we sell plots of land. If you go to the Netherlands and some other European countries that have sea, they sell their body of water. You can rent it, you can buy it. Just like if you come to a place, you can rent land for 10 years. Either you use it for farming or you build, build with her, warehouse here or logistic firm. After 10 years, you vacate. If you want to buy it, you buy it for, for life. The same thing happened in those countries. You can utilize your water space. And that is where you see our people, businessmen, will start going to boat business. If you, that is why today if you come in Biafra land, you hardly see boats that are operating. I took my time the other day. I was um, watching a documentary by this um, blogger. Um, of course, she says she said traveling journalist Nello Josh when she went to cover the Uguta Lake. I was like, wow, this is a very beautiful river. It's greenish, it's clean, you know. But I didn't see boats there. If you see how people we are crossing the Uguta Lake to Anambra side, that takes them about five minutes, right? Oh uh, yeah, five minutes. With that something that looks like badge. So that's a business opportunity. If you have a boat, if you can afford it, you now deploy your boat there. It will be taking people across and bringing them back, taking people across to the Anambra side, bringing them back. At 30, 30 seconds, you go, you make your money. From that Uguta Lake, you can operate to Headbridge. 
on each other. You can go back to Delta, you can move down to River State, you can move to Cross River, you can move to Aquaibo, you can move to Ebony State, you can move to Abia through your boat. This will become an easy means of transportation because our people are not into it and the zoo is fighting so hard to take up the waterways. So, and they have deployed their full and machinery and other things. But these are things why we are fighting for Biafra. Because I'm a total entrepreneur. Yes, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a farmer. This is what I do, agriculture. So I know the value of the things I'm telling you. And like I told you that the reason I do discuss about Biafra is that if it is not important for you, it is to me. And I have reasons why I want to do it. I cannot establish my agricultural industry in Biafra land. And it's an issue because the zoo wouldn't allow you. You try, you see. These are the things we've passed through. So we have reasons. I have my reason. And I know that our children will enjoy Biafra land. Why we are fighting must not be for our own alone. We want to build a better time, a better uh, generation when our children come here. Some of them might not even know what we passed through. Just like today, some of us doesn't know what our fathers passed through. Because there are some people that who doesn't really care about what Biafra is all about, what we are doing. Maybe sometimes they have one or two better positions in the Zoological Republic. So when you talk about freedom, they tell you no. But there is nothing that's as sweet as, as, as freedom. And that word freedom is the mightiest word in the dictionary of mankind. That's what you call freedom. That is why Chukwu Kikabiyama, after creating human, you say, I am giving you freedom. Now, for your fellow man to come to deny you that freedom, we said no. And we must continue doing our best. Wonderful people, we thank all of you for your comments. And very, very soon, we will be coming up for live interactive session. We are each and every one of you. We contribute whatever you want. We are building a community channel here. And this channel we go for. All of you who have contributed, who have commented from A to Z, we appreciate you so much. And we love all of your comments. We thank you from A to Z. We must reiterate once again, we are not owing anyone apology. We are saying that we are Biafrans, no matter what you do. And in Biafra land is where we have our citizenship. And until Biafra is fully restored, we will not rest. May you remain safe and blessed wherever you may be.